Right, 15rounds.com here with uh, all-time great women's fighter Mia St. John. Just announced your August 14th uh, rematch showdown with Chrissy Martin here in uh, Freon, California. Uh, tell us about that fight going in it. Well, you know, this has been 10 years in the making. Um, I'm excited about it. I feel like I outlost her in the first fight. And now that I, I know her even better, I know that in this fight, not only will I outbox her again, but I will actually stop her. And I'm going to retire with the WBC belt. Now, with all due respect, going into that first fight 10 years ago, you're kind of generally considered kind of like a novelty act. You've been known for fighting on the De La Hoya undercards, but you definitely, uh, you know, legitimized yourself to the general public in that fight and gave a very good account of yourself. How big is it for you now to get the rematch and try and get not only, you know, the, the notoriety of being a great fighter, but also getting the win this time? Well, you know, I mean, I, I'm used to being the underdog. Um, like you said, I went into the fight, um, people thinking I was going to get knocked out in the first round, and obviously that didn't happen. And I went on to fight, you know, the best women in, in boxing. You know, I fought Holly Holm, Jessica Rakosi. Um, the list just goes on. I fought them all. Um, and so I think that people know by now that I'm not just a novelty. I, I can walk away from the sport knowing the truth that, um, you know, I wasn't the best female boxer in women's boxing, nor was I the worst. I was damn good. Um, but I know the truth, because I, I fought the worst, I fought the mediocre, I fought the best, and so I know where I stand, and so I don't regret anything that I did in, in my career. I don't regret fighting the best or um, leaving top rank. Um, I, I feel that I did what was right. And then, uh, you know, that first fight, the scores were kind of wide. I rewatched it a few days ago, and I gave you, you know, three rounds in the middle, and at minimum, the last round, you had her on the ropes for the last round, almost the entire round, and, and uh, the scores were quite wide, uh, quite surprisingly to me. Uh, how did you think about that first fight? Did you think it, it was, it, you know, maybe should have been your victory or at least a closer fight? I, I felt like it, should, it should have been a lot closer um, by uh, probably two rounds closer. Um, but... You know, that, I mean, that's boxing. It's very political. Um, it's still political. You know, she is in, in, if you look at the bout sheet, she's in the blue corner, which is the winning corner. I'm in the red corner, which is the losing corner. You know, so the judges are, are not confused. They know who's coming out of what corner. Um, but that's boxing, and I know that. I've known that my entire career. Um, there were times when I was in the blue corner, you know, and I knew that I was set to win, um, that that person had knocked me out. Um, so, you know, it goes both ways. Um, and this time, it's just once again in her favor. And, and that's okay, because I, I wouldn't have accepted this fight if I wasn't okay with it, because I'm pretty confident that I'm going to stop her. You mentioned the corner color issue during the press conference, actually. Is that kind of nod you a little bit, or is that kind of added motivation? Is it... Does it kind of bug you that you're the, you know, you're the not winner corner, so to speak? Oh, yeah. It, it hurts anyone's ego. I mean, that's the first thing we do when we get into the venue is we look at the bout sheet and see what corner we're in. Um, yeah, it's upsetting. It, it, it's, it's an ego pressure. Because I'm thinking, I'm Mia St. John. <laughs> what am I doing in the losing corner? Um, but, you know, like I said, sometimes, you know, I'm in the winning corner. Sometimes I'm in the losing corner, and here I am once again with Christy in the losing corner. And that's okay. It's okay because I'm, I'm pretty confident in what I'm going to do. You know, I'm, I'm just not going to leave it in the judges' hands. And then obviously Christy's had uh, some personal issues and they uh, ended up postponing the fight. Uh, you were gracious enough to uh, you know, allow for the postponement and not take an interim fight and jeopardize the fight at all. Going, going to the first fight, she was quoted as saying she had distractions and she didn't spar and that kind of attributed to her performance. Does that give you any inclination that this might affect her performance this time around? You know, we both went into that first fight not being able to spar, not being able to train. Um, we both had distractions because of the promoter. Um, and this fight is no different. She's had distractions. It's so have I. My mother spent the last year, all of 2011, battling lung cancer and passed away um, four months ago. So um, we both had major distractions in our lives. And But like I said, at the end of the day, we're fighters. We get in that ring to fight. That's what we do. And, and it's not going to be any different. None of that stuff is going to matter once the bell rings.
you, uh, you've had you know one or two probably I think fights that were billed as your final fight you know quote unquote this one's billed as final victory mm -hmm. uh, you said during the press conference if you know it when you win the fight you'll give Christy Martin another fight at least one more fight is how how I likely know, is this your last fight I know that, um, I know that see I don't think it's it's likely I know that when I win she's going to want a rubber match she will. Her ego's too big to just say, oh, okay, me abuse. <laughs> I'm retired. She won't do that. She's going to want it. She's going to want a rematch. And I'm willing to give her that. But that's all I'm willing to do. I'm not willing to fight again. I'm not willing to fight anyone else. Um, so stop calling me out. <laughs> um, yeah, that's, that's going to be it. And this fight's for a WBC title. Uh, Christy Martin had the title before, and she lost it kind of controversially. How big is it for you to have a WBC title on the line in your possibly one of your final fights? Um, uh, just to clarify things, Christy didn't lose her title. She is still the champion in the 154 division. She still holds the WBC title. Um, she's not lost it. I did lose my title in Mexico two years ago. Um, but I, I'm still a WBC champion. The WBC always considers their champions, former and present, a WBC champion. Um, it is the world's biggest sanctioning body. Um, so everybody wants a WBC title. Everybody wants to retire with that belt around their waist, and, and that will be me. Yes, she is the current champion, but I will be taking that belt from her. And for the first fight, you had to give away some weight going into the fight. You were the smaller fighter coming up, and I'm not sure, you know, how you know how that has changed for this fight. The the weight's higher than even the first fight was. But yeah. you know, just sta looking at you standing together, you don't look like a smaller fighter naturally. Maybe it's the high heels. I don't know. Right. But you, you look like you know a comparable size fighter. Is that any kind of disadvantage? There's still a, a huge weight difference. There's still a, there's a bigger weight difference now than there was ten years ago. Um, but that doesn't bother, bother me because I, I don't feel that like it matters. I feel like, um, yeah, she's going to be bigger and she's stronger, but I am faster and a better technician. And, and I feel that, that the better boxer always prevails. Well, well not always, but um, in this case, that is what's going to happen. You've been a big advocate of women's boxing, you know, your whole career. You've been one of the cover girls for the sport. And, and uh, you know, 10 years ago, this was the biggest fight, women's fight that could be made. And now 10 years later, in America at least, it's probably the biggest women's fight that can be made. What does that say about the sport and, uh, and you know, what you've done for the sport? Yeah, it's, you know, it is kind of shocking that, you know, in the late 90s, we were the two names in women's boxing, and to this day, you still can only name three names, myself, Christy Martin, and Layla Lee. Um, that says that it really hasn't progressed that much as far as the pros, but as far as the amateurs, you know, they're in the Olympics now, and that is huge. It's huge, um, and it's exciting. You know, I, th I think you'll go down as a fighter that you know got an opportunity, but definitely made the most of it, and actually took it to develop into one of uh, you know the best fighters, you know, improvement-wise that I can remember. Uh, you know, c uh, congratulations on your career, and uh, good luck with your fight coming up. Thank you so much.